We welcome you to the Toyota Center, Houston, Texas, for game one of our TNT doubleheader, the San Antonio Spurs facing the Houston Rockets. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert along with Steve Kerr and Greg Sager. Tim Duncan and his Spurs coming in at 16-4. Last night, they lost at home to the surging Seattle Sonics. That ended San Antonio's win streak at 8 and won 21 straight at home. While the Rockets, with a record of 8-11, and 11, Houston has won its last two after dropping five straight. And head coach Jeff Van Gundy feels they need a prolific game. From Tracy McGrady, who last Thursday night here on TNT erupted for the 48 points in that shootout with Dirk Nowitzki in Dallas. So look at the starting lineups first. For the Rockets, McGrady joined by Bobby Sur, Yao Ming the center, Ryan Bowen making his third straight start. Jim Jackson out with a back problem. Juwan Howard at the other forward spot for the San Antonio Spurs, who on the road have won eight. And uh, lost three. Starting lineup. Led by Tim Duncan, who comes at averaging 22 points. 12 rebounds. Three block shots. Bruce Bowen, Rosho Nesterovic. That's the front line. Mano Ginobili and Tony Parker in the backcourt. The officials, Derek Stafford, Jason Phillips, and Tom Washington. The San Antonio Spurs swept the Rockets last season, took all four games, and Steve San Antonio has won the last seven against Houston. Very difficult matchup for Houston. The Spurs are 23-4 and four versus the Rockets since Tim Duncan arrived for the 1995-96 season, and it's no coincidence. I mean, he's dominated a lot of people, but this is a team he's really had a lot of success against was a problem with Jawan Howard's mouthpiece. <laughs> so we had that brief delay and Rockets control the opening tip. McGrady being guarded by Bowen, as you would expect. And this is Ryan Bowen. Here is McGrady firing away. What an advantage San Antonio has to be able to put Bruce Bowen on the opposition's best score and not have to worry about double teaming. He reminds me a lot, if you use a football analogy, Deion Sanders would just close off one side of the field, a, a shutdown guy. That's what Bruce Bowen does for the Spurs. It allows everybody else to defend their own guy. And you recall last year, Steve, there were several players who complained about the tactics of Bruce Bowen. Here's Mistarevich. Mistarevich played only 11 minutes last night, did not play in the second half at all against Seattle. Sir met on the switch by Ginobili. Last year, Ray Allen, Vince Carter upset with some of the tactics as Cal Ming was able to start. They refer to Bruce Bowen as being a dirty player. We were talking with Bruce prior to the game about that. I said, is there anything between you and Tracy McGrady? Maybe something we can stir up for television purposes. Uh, he said, do not start. Ginobili had a and a kick it out. Shot clock is down to five. Parker with that teardrop and the tip by the Well, uh, I told Bruce, even if T-Mac hasn't said anything, I'm sure he doesn't like you either. Most people don't like Bruce Bowen. He just gets into people and bothers them. Toughest one-on-one -on -one defender in the NBA on the perimeter. This is Brian Bowen. Shot clock, down to five. McGrady puts behind the back and has to kick it out. Down to two, down to one. Sur fires from downtown. Now you see right away, McGrady gets a step past Bowen, and there's Nesterovich waiting for him. And that's what the Spurs do. Those big guys come over and help at the block every possession. And Tony Parker knocks down the three. Struggled with his game early on, Mar, with his shooting, but he's bounced back nicely here the last couple of weeks. Spurs now lead it. Five to two. They double up on Yao Ming. Blocked by Nesterovich. Handled by McGrady. Here's Howard. It counts. And the foul. So, Juan Howard is 
headed to the line. Spurs are an excellent shot blocking team, but sometimes what can happen, Marv, if you block a shot, all of a sudden the offensive rebound goes right back to Tracy McGrady. He makes the nice feed. Not a lot of contact there on Howard, but you know, he'll go to the line and finish off the three-point play if he can. Foul charge to Bruce Bowen. And we saw right at the start the crowding of Yao Ming talking with Greg Popovich prior to the game. He said uh, that's what they plan to do all night long. They, they said uh, Yao doesn't always react well when he's being fronted. Well, that's the scouting report around the league. Everybody's going to try to front him, double-team him, try to use the speed that uh, has bothered him so far in his first few years in the league. Here's Duncan over Howard. Handled by McGrady. Nice job by Howard. Keeping Duncan out of the lane. That's going to be a focus for the Rockets all night long. Keep him from getting that deep position. Sir to the crossover. Parker hanging in. Not allowing Sir to unleash a shot. Ryan Bowen, who does not look to shoot, gives it up. Here's Howard. Kept alive by Ryan Bowen. He is all energy. Bowen to the reverse. And last touch by the Spurs. Gotta love Ryan Bowen. Jeff Van Gundy inserted him into the lineup. Remember a couple weeks ago, Van Gundy said, we're just not getting enough energy. Well, if there's one thing Bowen provides, it's energy. The problem is, not a great score, so Houston trying to make up for that in other areas. Ryan Bowen, originally a second-round pick of Denver, and spent five years as a member of the Nuggets in the starting lineup because of the back injury suffered by Jim Jackson, a guy that they really miss. Foul is called. It is on to Starovich. There is Jim Jackson, who was hit with the flu, as opposed to flu-like <laughs> symptoms, as you like to point out. He, the, he doesn't have a high ankle sprain, though, does he? No, it? it's okay. back spasms. <laughs> uh, he is so important for this team because he provides that third scorer for the Rockets, and he's frequently the one who's left open on the double teams and gets those open three-point looks from the corner. Got clocked out of two, and Ryan Bowen has to shoot again. It's a 24-second violation. Ball did not hit hit the rim, and Greg Popovich has to be very pleased with that defensive sequence. Well, it's getting to be commonplace for this team to just lock people down. Uh, they have replaced Detroit, I think, this season as the best defensive club in the NBA. Detroit not playing with the same passion that they did a year ago, but the Spurs are there every single night just closing teams off. Nice play, Nesterovich for Duncan, and a foul. It's on Yao Ming. You hear the reaction from the crowd as Yao is called for his first. It's so tough for Yao Ming and for Jeff Van Gundy. You know, those big guys battle down there so hard, and you know, a little touch play like that becomes a foul. That's a tough one to swallow. Here's Ginobili for three. Manu Ginobili, he was averaging 15 points, five rebounds, four assists. Spurs now lead it 8-5. Came as a result of Bobby Sears attempting to steal as we see Tim Duncan's block. Parker. Tony Parker, one man fast break off that gorgeous rejection by Duncan. Spurs once again are in the top four or five in the NBA and block shots. And having two seven footers down there makes it awfully tough as we see again. This time was Ginobili able to block Howard. Parker wide open for three. Good job by Nesterovich. Played well here at the start. I, I think there was a message last night. Played only 11 minutes. Sat out the second half against the, the Sonics. Timeout is called with 7.15 to play in this first quarter. San Antonio with a three-point lead. Welcome back to the Toyota Center, Houston, Texas. And this will be the site for the 2006 all-Star Game, All-Star Weekend. The announcement made this past Tuesday by NBA Commissioner David Stern, Rockets uh, owner Les Alexander. They double up on Sora. They look to Trapton, and Sora has to call for time. Jeff Van Gundy absolutely livid. Hates to use those timeouts early, but Sora found himself in a terrible spot. That corner where you really have nowhere to go. He's got two big guys on him. 
not much he could do. Houston Rockets just 2 of 11 here from the field at the start. Steve, they have missed their last five shots. Three of the nine misses have been blocked. They are scoreless the last few minutes and 20 seconds. It it may well be a long night for the Rockets Could here. be. You know, we talked to Jeff Van Gundy earlier. I said, Jeff, how are you going to match up with the Spurs? He said, not very well. And he said, you know, we may struggle to score 50 points against this team. And we all know Jeff. He's, he's got that sort of gallows humor about him. He, he loves to uh, talk about his doom, but look at this defense here. Spurs number one in the NBA in field goal percentage, and they do an excellent job blocking shots at the rim, and they've got this guy, Bruce Bowen, who's all over Tracy McGrady. Yao Ming with a jump hook, handled by Nesterovich. As Tracy McGrady has had a difficult time getting looks here in the early going as he has been swallowed up by uh, Bruce Bowen to this point. Duncan backs his way on Howard. And the other factor tonight, they they miss Jim Jackson, who is a long-range threat. Nice move by McGrady to set it up. Yao fumbled it. Yao with the recovery and is fouled. Hit from behind by Nesterovic. I think you're exactly right, Marv. You talk about the absence of Jim Jackson. Jackson, you see McGrady there driving to the hoop. Well, the Spurs can offer a lot more help without Jackson's presence out there. They don't have any shooters out there. The Rockets don't. So without that man, now all of a sudden, you've got Ryan Bowen in the corner who's not used to shooting that shot. You've got Bob Sura who's more of a penetrator himself. Spurs can really commit themselves to covering McGrady at the rim. Correction on that foul. It's on Duncan, his first, not Ms. Derevich. Yalming, 81% at the line last season. Sure, able to get to it. Howard setting the pick. And now not able to handle that bullet pass from McGrady. Beautiful feed from McGrady. And then Yao was upset that he didn't catch it. Did you see what he did? He took a swipe yeah. at the backboard without jumping. <laughs> How many guys can do that, Marv? Devin Brown, who has played very well for San Antonio, has checked in for the first time. So Parker and Brown in the backcourt. Here's Parker attempting the, the teardrop. Good play by Sura to knock it aside. And it is last touched by the Rockets. And now Greg Popovich sending on Malik Rose for Roshon Esterovich. Let's check in with Craig Sager. Craig? Well, how the Spurs react to last night's loss is still unfolding. However, if history tells us anything, it's that the Spurs do not go on losing streaks. What? Now in his eighth season, the most regular season games that Tim Duncan has lost in a row is just three. Greg Popovich says talent is one thing, but he thinks that the professionalism that Duncan and his team displays is even more important. Jeff Van Gundy takes this a step further. He says coming off a loss, the Spurs are a machine. They do not beat themselves. Mark? Well, San Antonio had won 21 straight at home prior to the loss last night to Seattle. You saw Tracy McGrady shaken up, but he's he's all right. And now Brent Barry comes on for the first time, and uh, Brent has been struggling. Played only six minutes in the game against the Sonics last night. It's been a difficult transition for Brent. A brand new team, brand new system. He's not shooting well and not defending well either, which is the main reason Greg Popovich has benched him. Nice move. Beautiful footwork by Jawan Howard. So the Spurs now lead at 10-8. Big men on the floor for San Antonio. Duncan and Rose. Here's Duncan getting the step. Rebounded by Howard. See McGrady coming over to double Duncan when he faces up. That's a part of Houston's strategy tonight. And here comes Duncan. Rockets get back. Duncan to the crossover. Brown. Duncan being played by Yao with help. Nice play. Ryan Bowen came over and deflected it out of bounds. Well, they'd like to hedge down there on Tim Duncan, dig as much as they can without fully committing to the double because San Antonio, one of the best teams in the in the league at attacking the closeout um, with guys like Ginobili, Parker, Brent Berry. Very difficult, after you double Duncan, to contain those guys out on the perimeter. 
Reese Gaines has come on, replacing Ryan Bowen. Reese Gaines, one time member of the Orlando Magic, was only his fourth game with Houston. Here is Malik Rose. That is not his shot. Probably a step outside of his range, and it's a shot that he's actually not taken a whole lot this year as we see the Brady miss the 18-footer. Greg Popovich was telling us earlier he's really been pleased with Rose concentrating on defense and running the floor and not taking bad shots. That is a fast break that did not work. <laughs> Sloppy basketball here, Mark. Ten to eight with almost four minutes left in the quarter. Been a little ugly so far. And Steve, you know Jeff Van Gundy does not mind this uh, this style of play. Oh, I do. Can we get something <laughs> a little more entertaining? McGrady. He lost it. Parker on the run. And so Parker try to get it to Brown. He's called for the traveling violation. So Rosh on the Starevich checks back in. Now, you look at these numbers, and obviously Tim Duncan and David Robinson have a huge part in that. Two guys who really cover that rim area but a lot of it is, is greg popovich's emphasis on defense of course the rockets there as well perennially uh, jeff van gundy's teams defend well i think both coaches have a very similar philosophy as mcgrady finally gets one to go yes uh, those numbers put up there by uh, two teams that were coached by uh, jeff van gundy see a nice move by mcgrady to draw the foul it's called on brown you know, Greg Popovich actually offered Jeff Van Gundy a job about two years ago after he had left the Knicks. I think both of them have a similar way of looking at the game of basketball. They want to defend first and foremost. They want to take care of the basketball. They're more inclined to play a slower style. I think in the last couple of years, Popovich has maybe adapted a little bit more to his personnel with Parker and Ginobili, but both guys really like that, that defensive emphasis. At the time, Jeff said, no, I'd, I'd rather work with the czar and that other guy on, on television. And uh, ended up with, with TNT for a short time. We'll be right back. Tonight's player trader is brought to you by Land Rover. We've got a little new technology here, Mark. Something that wow. the czar probably wouldn't have been as sophisticated. Yeah. But take a look what the Spurs like to do here. When they get a rebound, Tim Duncan is so good at running the floor, he will run directly to the block. Now, Tony Parker may have a pass over the top, but that's a very difficult pass to make. So Spurs prefer to feed the corner. Meanwhile, Duncan is sealing his man, catching in the lane, laying it up. It's something that Greg Popovich has employed really for the last four or five years with Duncan, and you usually see it at least once or twice a game. Nicely done. That's Thank a, you. That's a debut. How jealous is Bizarro? Beno Udrek, the, the rookie from Slovenia who has played well, has checked in for the first time. Barry not able to hit. Andre Barrett has come on for the first time for Houston, and he has played well. Comes off a career game the other night. So Barrett and Gaines now in the backcourt. Kempi Matumbo up front along with Tracy McGrady and Jawan Howard. Here's McGrady forcing over Brown. Rebounded by Nostarevich. A luxury for Greg Popovich to be able to bring in Devin Brown for Bowen. Another excellent defender. Just under three. Batting of the first. Neither club has shot well. This is Udrek. And rebounded by Matumbo. Barrett the other night, 5 for 7 from the field, 14 points, career high, 10 of his 14 in the fourth quarter in the win over the Hornets on Tuesday here at home. Sparovich kept alive, nice play by McGrady, Matumbo on the drive, and he is fouled by Sparovich. Well, Rascio made a terrific play to come over to help on McGrady's drive, and unfortunately for him, Matumbo gets the rebound and leaves Sparovich in poor position to defend the next shot. Looking for all the latest news on the NBA, watch NBA TV Insiders. That's every weeknight, 7 o'clock Eastern Time, to find out tomorrow's NBA news today. So Dekepi Matumbo hitting on his first, and the Rockets now lead it 12-10. to 10. Houston only 4 of 18 from the field. 
San Antonio, 4 of 15. Spurs with just two points the last five and a half minutes. Well, I'm looking forward to listening to Charles Barkley at halftime. I don't know about you. Charles is tuned to a Law & Order episode. <laughs> already. On another think, network. Yeah, he, he may have given up already. But we're early. Long way to go. A lot of basketball to be played. Coming up on two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Shot clock down to three. Rose passed on the shot. And McGrady able to come up with it. First team to 50 wins, Marv. Howard. And the poor shooting at both ends continues. Good hands by McGrady. Barrett pushing it. And Barrett pulls it back. Rookie out of Seton Hall. He was in camp with the New York Knicks. And Barrett with a beautiful move. Andre Barrett extending to a 15-10 rocket lead. Nice finish by the little guy. He's been shooting the ball well from the perimeter. That's an added bonus if he can knock down that shot. Udrek. So he drills it. Reno Udrek. From Slovenia, he has been groomed as the backup point guard for Tony Parker, first-round draft pick, and the 28th selection overall. What a find he's been for this team as Juwan Howard misses the jump hook. Udrich was the best point guard in Chicago at the pre-draft camp, and Spurs were in desperate need of a backup point guard. He's been a perfect fit. Final minute of this first quarter. McGrady for three. Tracy McGrady from downtown. The Tracy, two of seven. He has six points. He has not shot well the last two games after that sensational performance last Thursday night against Dallas here on TNT. Nesterovich missed the tip. The tumble did a nice job off the boards. So the Spurs cannot get anything to go, and they wanted to get a two-for-one opportunity there, but Ginobili couldn't get the shot off early enough. Now just a two-second differential, so Rockets will hold. Down to ten seconds left in the quarter. McGrady being played by Barry. Here's McGrady for three. On the back tap, McGrady with another opportunity. Heaves it. That's the end of the first quarter. You're using Rockets. So the Rockets with an 18-12 lead after one. Here in Houston, San Antonio, shooting only 5 of 20, and Houston just 6 of 24, but they end the quarter with a 12-2 run. Back in Houston, second quarter about to get underway. For the Rockets, this is game three of a six-game homestand, and they are in a stretch playing 9 of 10 here at home. A chance for them to write their season. Only 8-11 at this point, but they've got Atlanta, Golden State, Charlotte coming up, and a lot of home games, so this is their opportunity to get back into the race here. Shot clock down to three. Here's Barry. Both teams having difficulty locating shots. Ginobili able to control on the back tap. It always works that way for a guy who's struggling like Brent Barry. You get the ball at the end of the shot clock with a terrible look at the rim. Thanks a lot. Are you talking from experience? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I am. The other thing that happened to, to Barry, his first shot of the game, open look, rattles in and out, goes about halfway down. Those are the types of things. When you're struggling, everything just sort of seems to go wrong, and eventually he'll find his stroke. He's, he's too good of a shooter not to, but boy, is it excruciating when you're going through it as a player. Taylor just uh, checked in, able to go glass, nice move, as he backed his way on Malik Rose, Rockets 20, and the Spurs 12, and San Antonio really struggling, they are 5 for 22 from the field, and playing sloppy in this first half, Tim Duncan makes his return, replacing Malik Rose, their bench has been so good this season, Marv, but really not able to get anything going here, so Popovich going back to Duncan and Parker and Bowen pretty quickly here in the second quarter. San Antonio coming off a home loss. Last night, the Sonics have made it two out of two against 
The Spurs, in fact, they handled the Spurs their worst loss of the season. That was back in uh, Game 3, 113-94. Seattle shot 51%, and that's a, that's a high for a Spurs opponent this season. Well, everybody's been saying now for a month, when is Seattle going to come back down to earth? Now, the Spurs knew they were good last night, so maybe the first one, they weren't prepared. They were ready last night, and Seattle still took it to them. So I think the Sonics may be for real. 16-3 and three now, McGrady picking it up. After the slow start, he has eight points, and the Rockets lead by ten. This is exactly the pace that Jeff Van Gundy had hoped for. Remember, he talked before the game about keeping San Antonio out of the paint. Well, so far, no penetration from Parker and Ginobili and company, and they've been keeping Duncan outside that area right where he is now. Well, Duncan able to get in closer. That's his first bucket. And that ends a 16-2 run by the Rockets. It was a 16-2 run, Mark, but it took about 11 minutes, I think. <laughs> so I don't know if you can call it a run. But I'll go with it. A prolonged run. <laughs> okay. Nice pass. Taylor rejected. Matumbo is able to recover. And it's a 24-second violation. Now Bruce Cohen will... Check back in, as will Tony Parker. Barry and uh, Udrick sit down. Spurs have blocked six shots now, Marvin. Uh, uh, you know, they, uh, they, the numbers are a little deceiving. You look at Houston, you say, wow, they've got seven offensive rebounds. But it's just because they keep getting their shots blocked and they land in their laps, and then San Antonio blocks another one. Spurs are number four in that department, led by Duncan, who averages three a game. He's second to uh, Andre Kirilenko. Kirilenko, four blocks per game, although he is sidelined on the injured list. Ginobili off a nice pass from Duncan. Boy, does he do that well. I mean, that shot o was over Dikembe Mutombo, one of the most difficult players in the league to get a shot over, but Ginobili using that long arm, that brilliant jumping ability, and great body control. Bowen able to break it up. McGrady got his hand on it, so the Rockets get it back, and game stepped out of bounds. So it will be San Antonio ball. Now Tony Massenberg will, will come on for San Antonio. So Greg Popovich doing lots of shuffling. Tony Massenberg in his first year with San Antonio. Signed as a, a free agent. Actually began his career with the Spurs. He is a well-traveled <laughs> yeah, individual. Easier to list the teams he hasn't played for, I think. He is tied with Chucky Brown. As uh, Tim Duncan is able to bank at home. For most teams played in the NBA, 12 teams in 13 years. From Massenburg, second stint, as I mentioned, with the Spurs, had a couple of uh, those with the Grizzlies. Oh, Offensive foul. foul. That's his first. Throw the ball back to San Antonio. Foul called on games. Well, Tim Duncan doing his best to get the Spurs back into this game. First off the double team, the beautiful feed to Manu Ginobili, who finishes with his customary left-hand scoop. And then this is his go-to move right here. Right-hand jump hook off the glass. Well, we're trying to develop that still, I think. Uh, hopefully it'll take on my personality of making those hustle plays, diving after loose balls, sticking your nose in on rebounds, stopping your man on defense. I think, uh, you know, we certainly have the talent, but we got to develop that toughness, that mentality to go out and stick it to people. And for Bob Sawyer, his sixth game back after missing the first 14 with uh, the back problem. To Teron Liu, he is on the injured list, torn cartilage in his right knee, Jim Jackson sideline tonight, as is Charlie Ward, still on the injured list with a, a sore knee, Jackson out with a back problem. Remember Jeff Van Gundy last week said we've got to surround Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady with pit bulls, you know, we've got to get guys who really get after it, Houston early in the season really seemed very soft, this new lineup seemingly quicker and faster to the ball. Ginobili from downtown. And the Spurs are within one since Tim Duncan checked back in. It's a a 9-0 run for San Antonio. I love the unselfishness of Tony Parker as Taylor misses the shot. Parker had a layup underneath the basket but found a wide open Ginobili. That sort of passing has been contagious on this Spurs team this year. One of the best passing teams in the NBA. 
And a foul on the Rockets as Duncan took a shot on his forehead. Ryan Bowen called on the foul. You see plus nine with uh, Tim Duncan on the floor. That's one of those, oh, really, stats? They're better with Duncan on the floor? Oh, really? I didn't know that. But, you know, our viewers at home maybe Are you taking it. a shot at a statistical group? I am. It's like the plus-minus of the National Hockey League, and, and I agree with you. It's the same concept. Massenburg is tied up. Good play by Maurice Taylor. You know that the uh, Indianapolis Colts have a much better plus-minus <laughs> when Peyton Manning is on the field. I don't know if you, you followed that. Well, see, that's unfair, because if you take a quarterback who is successful when there's only one quarterback... Basically, we got to go. He is Tim Duncan. He's yes. a two-time oh, no, I agree. MVP. I agree. Their plus-minus will be bad. I'm just trying to take a cheap shot at our guys in the chair. You know, ever since the Czar left, I've been searching for a yeah. punching bag. Hey. I'm sorry. How about the Czar? His Grizzlies have won three of four. And I know as uh, Yao Ming was able to knock it down, I know that... Mike Fratello is very busy with his new best friends, Al Gasol and Bouncy Wells, <laughs> Stormile Swift, Jason Williams. And the uh, crowd feeling that was last touched by San Antonio, but it goes to San Antonio. I know the Grizzlies are watching here. They have an off night. So we like to point out the czar makes a great first impression, but the annoyance factor will set in within days. Probably hours, Mark. And we'll see what good friends those guys are to him when they lose a couple in a row. Here's Duncan. Kept alive. Another possession for the Spurs. Five minutes gone by in the second quarter. Ginobili for three. Yes! Mano Ginobili again from downtown and San Antonio has tied the game at 24. And again the pass coming from Tony Parker showing his maturity. Moving the ball and getting his teammates involved. Nice move by Yao Ming stepping around Tony Massenberg to draw the foul. This is the area Parker has really improved upon in the last year. He's such a Score. He's got a scorer's mentality, but as a point guard, he realizes he's responsible for the team and for getting other people involved. And, and now all of a sudden, you've got Ginobili knocking down two threes. You've got Duncan back in the game. This is more the Spurs team that we're used to. And we were talking uh, earlier with Greg Popovich about the, the dramatic improvement of Tony Parker past couple of years. And you've seen it. You've played with Tony. You've played a rookie season. Yeah. I think the improvement actually is visible in his demeanor. He was a guy who frequently would pout, you know, as a rookie. And in his second year, things didn't go his way if he wasn't making his shots. Now he's got a much more upbeat, sort of team-first style demeanor about him. And Craig Popovich couldn't be happier. Deliberate possession, as per usual by the Rockets. Drop step by Yao Ming, but too many steps. Traveling violation. We asked Greg Popovich before the game, will anybody else play against Yao Ming? He said, yeah, we're going to throw Tony at him. And here Massenburg does a great job. Of course, you and I thought he was talking about Parker, but you can see why he put Massenburg on him. He forces the travel there. He's an excellent defender. Did you think Greg was pulling your heart? I thought he was. I think you thought yes, so, too. I did. I did. Well, he usually does pull our legs. So even when he's serious, you know, he's the boy who cried wolf. We don't even believe him when he's telling the truth. All right, here's Duncan. Handled by McGrady. Just under six minutes to play. First half, Marv Albert, Steve Kerr, Craig Sager. We are in Houston. Rockets up by two. Taylor. And the four shooting continues over the Spurs of picked it up the last couple of minutes Duncan feeling around for the defender and then a strip good play back comes McGrady Barrett for Yao Ming good look from Andre Barrett now Popovich wants a timeout and Tim Duncan not happy not getting the call at the other end but beautiful feed here in the five on four fast break watch Andre Barrett penetrating into the lane and then finding the wide open Yao Ming for the slam. 
Welcome back to the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas. Steve, I know you have remained tight with your former teammates in San Antonio, in particular your close friend Tim Duncan. Now, this is the scene prior to the start of the game when Tim came over to our broadcast location. I felt this would be very emotional. Here comes Tim. Tim shake hands and... Oh, that's terrible. Uncalled for. He snubbed you. How soon they forget, Marv. I mean, doesn't oh, no. he remember how I carried him all those years? Oh, no, I'm sorry. He carried me. I forgot. I particularly enjoyed that moment. I'm sure you did. I'll tell you what, this guy has an unbelievable sense of humor, and he look rarely at shows. Look at that. Look at that. Come on. He dissed me, Marv. I like using that word, diss. He dissed me. The guy is so funny, and he rarely shows it to the media. He's one of those guys who he doesn't say much, but behind the scenes, he frequently has his teammates in stitches. The guy just with a very dry sense of humor, snappy one-liners, snappy one-liners, and, you know, moments like that where he playfully jokes with his teammates. All right, here's Devin Brown to just check back in. Devin Brown, in his third year from the University of Texas, San Antonio, grew up in, in San Antonio, has done the job shooting from downtown. He's 11 of 22 from the that three-point line. And Tracy McGrady, after the slow start, has come on. Tracy has 10 points. McGrady getting going here. You mentioned Brown, Marv. This guy has been such a good addition for the Spurs. Really, they didn't expect a whole lot out of him, but he had that great playoff series against the Lakers and now shooting well, just like Tony Parker is for the Spurs. And Brown, another one of those San Antonio players, very mild-mannered, egoless, just wants to play well, help the team. They've done a nice job of putting together a great group of guys. Kevin Brown, who we thought played well in the postseason last year in the series against the Lakers. Sure, I had to put the brakes on his Barrett, penetrating, fires one up. Rebounded by Taylor, good hands by Taylor, but he's rejected by Duncan. Just under four remaining in the first half. Parker, way off. Got glass. Had the distance. Wide left. Yes. <laughs> Owen got a piece of that dribble. Almain is fouled. Now going to that. That drop step. Evan Brown came over to commit the foul. Patrick Ewing, an assistant coach with the Rockets, so adept with that drop step move, which uh, Yao has been showing more and more. Although well, the first time he did it, he did travel. <laughs> well, Ewing used to travel too. But yes, he, he did. Didn't call it. International coverage of the NBA continues this week. Tomorrow, it's a doubleheader on ESPN. Coverage starting 7.30 p.m. with uh, Philadelphia at Chicago, followed by Portland at Utah. And then Saturday on NBA TV, it's Sacramento and Indiana. Coverage starting 8 o'clock Eastern Time. You didn't think my comment about Ewing's traveling tendencies uh, were a result of my bitterness as a yes. time goal with the rivalry that we have. you think that was part of it? Here's Robert Ory who just came on. Yes, the opposition always very vocal about that drop step move by Patrick Ewing. Those Nick fans always claim that Jordan traveled, so I guess we're even. A great feed by Andre Barrett. Look at the penetration. This guy has done a really nice job of coming in and playing with authority. And this is a guy who wasn't expected to be in the NBA. He's come out and played with a lot of confidence. And he has uh, helped Yao Ming's game with the setups. Yao is 10 of Houston's last 12 points. Rockets up by four. Coming up on two and a half remaining in the first half. Mark Brady showing confidence. 12 points. For Tracy McGrady, along with seven rebounds and three steals. Well, you can see his body language has changed. All of a sudden, he's into the game. He got a couple of jumpers to go down. Now he's able to work ball in a little bit on the perimeter off those screen and rolls. Parker getting it inside, but Ori rejected. Here comes Sura. He has Barrett to his left. Broken up by Bowen. Good play by Bowen. And last touch by Barrett. 
The Houston 1-2 punch, Yao and McGrady helping the Rockets get off to this six-point lead. First, it's Yao with a two-hand slam, and then it's Tracy McGrady coming off the screen and knocking down the jumper. Coming up on the Verizon Wireless Halftime Report, highlights of Red Hot Seattle playing at Dallas and Charles and Kenny will be discussing Kobe Bryant's recent comments concerning Tom Malone. Steve, I would think San Antonio would be a leading candidate in the Tom Malone sweepstakes. I, I would think he would fit in extremely well with the Spurs. Well, I think so, too. Greg Popovich told us earlier he's been after him for two years. He said he hasn't talked to him this year, but that certainly if Carl wanted to come, he'd, he'd probably take him, and why not? He'd be an excellent addition to an already strong front line. It's under two minutes to play in this first half. Here's Ginobili for three. Kept alive by Duncan. with a good save. Parker now guarded by Barrett. Corey. Duncan. Off the double. Is fouled. Smart play by Duncan. One of the things I've always respected about him is even when he's struggling from the foul line, he's not afraid to go in there and draw a foul. He knows that if he's struggling a bit from the field, maybe not scoring, he's 2 for 10 here tonight, he's going to get to the rim, get to the line, get fouled. Foul on uh, Taylor. For more on Carl Malone, let's go to Craig. Well, Steve mentioned that Greg Popovich is interested in Carl Malone, but had not talked to him since this summer. I talked to his agent today, Dwight Manley. Carl Malone says, he stepped back and let me do my thing. When the time is appropriate, I will talk to Greg Popovich. I asked Manley when that time would be. His comment was, at this point, I cannot say anything. And when Dwight Manley says he can't say anything, it might be more than if he does say something. <laughs> Well, I, I wish that you'd step back and let me do my thing sometimes. I'm constantly stepping back, but I'm waiting for you to do your thing. <laughs> Rockets 36, Spurs 32 with a minute 20 remaining in this first half. Houston Rockets at 8 and 11. At one point, they lost five in a row. They won their last two over Philadelphia and New Orleans. In a stretch, playing 9 of 10 games at home. Yao Ming gets it down low. Nice pass from Old Taylor. And the Rockets have a six-point advantage. Well, Spurs went to his own defense, and the Rockets did an excellent job of being patient, working the ball, and finally getting a nice penetration from there. Ori passed on the three. And the call against San Antonio. Offensive foul on Ori. Excellent job by Houston stepping in. I believe it was Maurice Taylor stepping in and absorbing the contact from Robert Ory. Jeff Van Gundy's got to be thrilled, Marv, with the way this game has gone. Remember before the game he told us he really wants to keep San Antonio out of the lane. Well, they've certainly done that tonight. Only eight fast breaks, or excuse me, only eight points in the paint for the Spurs. And that is last touch by uh, Yao. Looks like he jammed the finger. And along with those eight points in the paint, zero fast break points. So Houston doing a fantastic job defensively. We'll see if they go two for one here. Nobly draws the double and is fouled by Sora. Rockets now over the foul limit. San Antonio has a, a foul to give. Manu Ginobili out of Argentina, led Argentina to the gold medal in the 2004 Olympics in Athens, averaged 19 a game. You see how far he has come in his three years in the NBA. I think he's got a chance to be an all-star this year, and I, I really believe that he and Parker transformed this San Antonio team. They used to be a club that was very stiff, very stodgy. They had too many guys like me who just like to sit out there and shoot three pointers. They didn't have enough athleticism. Now all of a sudden you've got Ginobili slashing and creating and Parker doing the same thing. They've become more of a pick and roll and running team than that standstill half court team that they were for years. In fact, 
when they had Steven Jackson. That's why they like Jackson, because he provided that, that element. Here's McGrady with time running out. Final seconds of this first half. Here comes Ginobili. Gets it away. So you're referring to yourself as a stiff? I, I was a stiff. You know, you, 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 you talk about big stiffs a lot. I was a small stiff. <laughs> but you know what? I stuck it out. Yes. <laughs> I made it. Well, at halftime, Mano Ginobili leading the way for San Antonio with 13. Yao Ming has 13. Tracy McGrady has 12. Let's go to Craig with Tracy. Well, Tracy, as a two-time defending scoring champion, what's your assessment of this game that's 38-34 at intermission? It was definitely a great defensive game. This team is working for every shot, and, uh, you know, we're just trying to make it hard on them. You know, the, the one thing I think people uh, misunderstand about San Antonio, it is Tim Duncan, but it's those guys do a great job of driving and kick. And I think they get a team, a lot of teams get caught up into uh, trying to double team Tim Duncan. Those other guys are making plays, driving, drawing everybody in and kicking out and knocking down shots. Does Bruce Bowen get under your skin when he tries to guard you so closely? Hey, he's a pest, man. He's one of the great defensive players in this league, and uh, he make you work for everything. And it's Six blocks for San Antonio. Moments ago, Craig talked with Spurs head coach Greg Popovich. Well, statistically, these are the two best defensive teams in the league, but with no fast break points and only eight points in the paint, what do you have to do to get more out of your offense? I think that uh, Jeff and I are both wondering that. Pretty good defensive teams, but uh, can't throw it in the ocean. When you guys play each other, it's usually a defensive battle. Do you expect more of the same in the second half, or do you make big adjustments? No, you know, we, we have to be who we are. Uh, and we can't just, you know, change the system all of a sudden and become uh, a Phoenix or a Dallas or a Seattle. We are who we are. And uh, either get it done or you don't. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mark. All right, thanks, Craig. I thought uh, Greg captured the play in the first time. <laughs> If you look up the term straight shooter yes. in the dictionary, I think Craig Popovich's picture is next to it. Tim Duncan with only his third field goal. He is 3 of 11. He now has eight points. So Houston up by two as this third quarter gets underway. Yao Ming spinning and scores. Quite a move. Mr. Ervich did a nice job defensively there, forcing Yao Ming off the block. But Big fellow showed his touch. San Antonio at 16 and 4. They had an eight-game win streak stopped at home last night by Seattle. The Sonics went to 16 and 3. Here's Duncan. One-handed by Soar. Pockets come in at 8 and 11. They won their last two after dropping five straight wins over Philadelphia and New Orleans. They doubled up on McGrady as Minoli came over to help. Here's McGrady. Drawing the foul, so Tracy will head for the line. Well, Grady was bailed out there by Nesterovich, but Bowen did an excellent job there. He did what players call pull the chair out from under the offensive player. But Grady was anticipating the contact, and you'll see on the replay, watch Bowen just back up. McGrady anticipates, Bowen backs up, but Grady's off balance, and they get Nesterovich for the foul. Bruce Bowen last year, all defensive first team for the first time. He was uh, second team the three previous years, and as Tracy McGrady saw in the early going, he is relentless. He is relentless, and, uh, and I was mistaken. They actually called the foul on Bowen there, which is his third, and that's rather important. Popovich would love to keep Bowen on Tracy McGrady the whole half if he could. Able to get to it. Good box out by Duncan. Tony Parker says, let's regroup. Parker uses the pick. Drops it right there. comes back to Nesterovic. Well, rebounding has been a problem for Houston. First half, they did a nice job, 26 to 21. But here in the third quarter, they've already given up a couple of offensive rebounds. Duncan around Sura, and the finish picked off. Here's Sura ahead of the field. 
Ginobili with the block, sure, but it was a foul. You can hear the reaction from the crowd. Oh, deflected out of bounds. Last touch by McGrady. Well, was Bobby Sura fouled? He gets the semi breakaway, but Ginobili's in great position. And, you know, he gets a piece of his hand that's sometimes called, sometimes not. Parker and Ginobili in the backcourt. Duncan with Nesterovich and Bowen up front. Duncan not able to hit. Now reaching for it. Here comes McGrady. McGrady met by Ginobili. Howard. A swipe in the direction of, of Yao Mei. He felt he was being held by Yao. Got to be careful doing that these days. We've seen a lot of technical fouls called on that play recently. Duncan heads to the line. You see Bowen getting the rebound and a little hand in there by Yao. And it looked like he just avoided that full elbow that can cost a lot of guys these days. Foul on Jawan Howard. Tim Duncan at the line. He, he hit his first two. Last year, Duncan was a 59% free throw shooter. He's up to 65 this year. Steve, you detect Tim doing anything different? Or just circumstantial? I, you know, I think if there's anything, he's getting a little more arc on the ball. Traditionally, his free throws have been among the flattest in the league. And you know, the coaching staff has tried for years to try to get a little more arc on that shot. And I think he's done that this year. You, you, you can't tell by much, but it's just a hint. And I think that's helping him quite a bit. Well, Jim is now 4 of 4 at the line. So much of it is your mindset. And when Tim gets off to a good start, makes a couple, he's likely to have a pretty good night. It's when he misses a couple that he starts to think about it, like most free throw shooters. Sora swinging in on Bowen, and you notice Greg Popovich has switched Bowen off McGrady. He does not want Bowen to pick up a fourth foul. But uh, Bobby Sura didn't seem to mind having Bowen on. Beautiful move there. Here's Duncan. Oh, a <laughs> facial served up at Yao Ming. Oh, my. Rockets up by four. We're early in the third. Now Ginobili defending on McGrady. This is Ryan Bowen. Duck clock to six. Howard. Rejected by Duncan. That's number four for Duncan. He leads the break. It's a three on two. Ginobili was tripped. Foul on McGrady, who does not like the call. No, they say Bowen on the foul, not McGrady. Uh, Ryan Bowen picks up his second. Well, Bowen and McGrady don't like the call, but you'll see here, Ginobili just trips over Bowen, and generally, if that happens, you're going to get a call because Ginobili's heading to the rim. Uh, Rockets fans won't like it. It's probably a little ticky tack, but that's a play that is usually called. Ginobili with the step, met by Yao, and then nice, nice play by Bowen. Last touch by Ryan Bowen. You see why Houston is amongst the league leaders in defensive field goal percentage. When you have a guy like Yao Ming meeting you with penetration at the rim, awfully difficult to get that shot over him. Devin Brown returns, replacing Bruce Bowen. Duncan moving to his left. Rebounded by Yao Ming. Just can't find any rhythm tonight. Duncan struggling with that little jump hook that he usually makes. Here's Juwan Howard. And a loose ball foul. It's called on the Spurs. It is on Nesterovich. That's his third. Russia Nesterovich in his second year with San Antonio. Signed as a free agent after five years with... Minnesota, last season, nine points, eight rebounds, two block shots per game. Spurs is satisfied with with his play. They'd like to see more from him this year. We talked earlier about the fact he played only 11 minutes last night. Here's Sora and Yao Ming able to put it down. 
Yao Ming, one of five from the field in the first quarter. Since then, he's hit all five of his shots, and the Rockets lead by six. I don't know if that was a shot or a pass, but it was a great play by Sura getting to the rim and allowing Yao Ming to get the slam dunk. However, Tim Duncan right back. Duncan has 14. Yao leads the way with 17. They collapse on Yao, spins, he blocked, he comes right back, and he draws the foul. The type of aggressiveness that Jeff Van Gundy has been hoping for from Yao Ming for a long time. And he's battling down there. Give him credit. That guy's got great hands, great feet. This is what happens to him a lot. He gets that first one blocked, but you've got to love the effort there. Offensive rebound, and then go strong to the hole, draw the foul. Steve, we talked about this uh, last week when we did the Dallas-Houston telecast. Jeff Van Gundy telling us that uh, Yao lets previous plays, which haven't gone well, affect his next play. And Jeff also said, you know, he's, he's listening to too much advice because he's such a good guy. And uh, Jeff Van Gundy says Yao Ming has to figure it all out you know, by himself. He said superstar players, uh, which he's hoping Yao Ming will become, superstar players figure it out through experience. And they've got physical advantages over everybody. They've got to understand how to play the game to take advantage of those physical abilities. See the double on Duncan and a foul is called. Ryan Bowen came over to help, made contact. So the Rockets with their third. Team foul. It's been fun to watch Yao Ming progress the last couple of years. You, you see him getting better and better, but you still see so much room for improvement. So he is still a work in progress, but what a great young man and a great talent. That counts in the foul. The foul on Sora. He pushed Duncan. Duncan still able to get the shot away, and he is headed back to the line. Watch Duncan seal his man here. He seals Juan Howard, which allows Nesterovic the passing lane. And how about this finish here? Sura grabs the right arm, so he just flings it up with the left, gets it to go. Amazing. He's missed so many easy ones tonight. And he knocks that one down. Tim is 4 of 4 at the line. Just so strong, though. You saw how he just manhandled Juan Howard down there. And ultimately, that's why I think he's the MVP of the league with apologies to Kevin Garnett. But he's just so physical down on the block and controls games in close, whereas Garnett's more of a perimeter guy and an all-around player. San Antonio with 11 points in the third quarter. Tim Duncan has all 11 off the steal. Here comes Parker. Rockets get back. Brown passed on the three. This guy's been red hot for a couple weeks to shoot the ball. And as Duncan makes his move, he's held. Foul on Yao Ming. That's his second. There's a uh, thing about being unselfish to a fault, and I think Kevin Brown there probably should have taken the shot. Shooting a shot when it's open gives your offense rhythm and gives the team a flow. Rockets in the penalty, talking about the consistency of uh, Tim Duncan. His numbers have not changed much. They haven't changed them. If you're wondering about the 25 versus 23, the only numbers that stand out really in terms of differences, I believe that was the year he shot 79% from the foul line. So he had one terrific year shooting the ball from the line. He's struggled since, but a guy who goes to the line that often you know, a 10% a swing either way is going to result in a lot of points. Six-time All-Star has been the most valuable player two of the last three seasons. Well, that's the first free throw he's missed after hitting six in a row. Duncan with 12 points in six minutes of play in the third. McGrady with a very difficult shot over Devin Brown. Now you see Popovich now going with Brown. Remember he had, uh, let's see, he had Brent Berry on him in the first half. He's trying to save Bruce Bowen to cover him in the fourth quarter. We'll see if he can get away with it. It's an old lead for a short term. Old as well, yes. Got blocked out of five. Brown. Brown is 
rejected. McGrady with the lead. Howard not able to handle it. And Tracy is saying, why didn't I take the shot myself? And he throws the lob to a guy who probably would have caught that five years ago. But in the meantime, this guy, Tim Duncan, with the unbelievable left-hand finish. And it counts. Or eight times, which is significant for him. He hasn't gone to the free throw line a lot this year, so when he shows this type of aggressiveness, this is exactly what is going to make him eventually an all-star, a very dominant big man. Rockets now lead it 50 to 46. Five minutes to play in this third quarter. Here's Bowen who just returned from downtown. That's his favorite spot. Loves the three from the corner, although he dropped off Last season, two years ago, led the NBA, shooting 44% from downtown. Last year, down to 36, but perhaps as a result of that three-point shot being off, he improved his mid-range game. Here's McGrady, and Brown able to scoop it up. Three on one, Bowen. Passed from behind him, so Bowen had an attempt to adjust. And it was deflected out of bounds. Spurs can't seem to get anything going, but you're right, Mark. Bowen has really improved that mid-range game, and he's been an excellent three-point shooter the last couple of years. Our colleague, Sean Elliott, calls him the roach because he's always hanging out with the corner. Yeah, which I, he was really thrilled with yes, that. Yes, that's nice. And that's his spot, right in the corner. All right, here comes Parker on another Houston turnover. Bowen taking all the way. Spurs recapture the lead. You, know, you, you wonder, why not foul him if you're Andre Barrett? Bowen has struggled in his career from the foul line. Make him earn it. Catch him. First time San Antonio has lived back in the first quarter. Shot clock is out of three. Here's McGrady off the face. Rebounded by Duncan. Once again, San Antonio on the run. Brown taking all the way got a piece of it. What a play by Andre Barrett. And back come the Rockets. Sure, not even looking for the shot. Yao rejected and fouled. He's blocked by Devin Brown. Let's take a look at Andre Barrett at the other end of the floor. Great pick here by Malik Rose allowing Devin Brown to get to the rim, but Barrett comes out of nowhere and just gets a piece of the ball. And Brown can't convert the fast break opportunity. So Yao Ming to the line. He's hit seven of eight. Coming up next, game two of TNT's Thursday night doubleheader, the Boston Celtics and the Portland Trailblazers from the Pacific Northwest. Kevin Harlan, Doug Collins will bring it to you. Celtics and the Blazers. We have three and a half remaining in the third here in Houston. And the Spurs and Rockets are now tied. Scott Padgett checks in for the first time, replacing Bob Surf. Scott Padgett, six-year man out of Kentucky in his second year with uh, Houston after playing four seasons with Utah. Yana has 21 points, and the Rockets lead by one. Bob, I'm impressed with the job Houston's bench has done. Barrett. Uh, Bowen coming in. Remember, Van Gundy was very concerned about the lack of energy with this team. These guys have really brought a new sense of aggressiveness to this lineup. Shot clock rolling down. Walker gets it out. Here's Brown. That's a two-pointer. Had a foot on the line. Devin Brown just did beat the shot clock. Boy, has he been hot here the last couple weeks? Had a career high 24. Last week, and he is just shooting the ball with confidence. Three or four tonight, six points. Mo Taylor showing some footwork on Malik Rose, rebounded by Parker. Rockets get back. Parker and Brown at the guards, Sterevich, Rose, Bowen up front, so Tim Duncan getting a rest. Here's Parker. Rose changed his mind. Here's Brown wide open. 
Again, a two he had put on the line. Kevin Brown continues the red-hot shooting, a 13-4 run by San Antonio. And the play starts with the unselfishness of Tony Parker. He penetrates and finds Rose, who then moves the ball on. And the foul call on Yao Ming. It's an offensive foul trying to set a pick. And Devin Brown has been absolutely terrific for the scores this season. You see him knocking down the long two and then off the unselfish feed from Malik Rose. Here's another one. Well, there's Devin Brown who has been sizzling four for five, 16 minutes of play. He's been doing this all season long. Three-year man from the University of Texas, San Antonio, their all-time leading scorer, and uh, one of the rarities these days, he actually played four years of, of college ball. Two years ago, he was playing for Fayetteville in the NBBL. Now he's starring on TNT. He's come a long way. He was MVP and Rookie of the Year developmentally. Malik Rose. And the long rebound is handled by Andre Bell. Taylor with Patrick and the tumbo up front. Deflected out. Last touch by McGrady. Well, this is the way the Spurs have won a lot of games over the years. They, they may struggle offensively, but this man right here preaches grinding it out. He frequently, frequently will tell his team, don't worry if we're not scoring, we always can rely on our defense. And that's why I think they're the most consistent team in the league. They can defend night in and night out, and they have Tim Duncan. Tim will be returning shortly, getting a rest, and a good run in the third quarter. In fact, scored the first 12 points for San Antonio. Rose setting the screen. Here's Brown. Starovich is fouled. Great feed by Brown. He's been knocking down jumpers now. Houston has to honor that, so you see his ability to penetrate, finding Starovich under the rim. Foul on. Padgett, Josh on Osterovich with a field goal, six rebounds, but showing much more energy tonight. He was benched in the second half last night of the loss at home to the Sonics. Talking with Rick Popovich about Josh on Osterovich. Said that he's been tentative on offense. He has been disappointing defensively. And this after he did so well last season. Had a terrific end to the season last year. Really picked up the Spurs defense. When Duncan went out, he really picked it up offensively. His numbers rose dramatically. He's a guy who's been streaky throughout his career. His confidence goes up and down. He has trouble from the foul line. Just 4 for 11 now on the year. But still a very effective player for San Antonio. Barrett getting it to Matumbo and a foul. He's hit from behind. So Andre Barrett able to find Kevin Machado. Oh, now to 113 remaining in the third quarter. San Antonio with a 56-52 lead on the Rockets. The foul was called on the Starovich. That is number four. Marv Albert, Steve Kerr, Craig Sager. First of our TNT doubleheader will be followed by Boston and Portland. Two of the best defensive teams in the NBA. San Antonio at 16 and four. They have won eight of the last nine. Houston at 8 and 11. Off to the uh, disappointing start at one stretch. They dropped five in a row. They now have one, two straight. Being Philadelphia and New Orleans. And they actually played well three games back. That was the overtime loss against the uh, Mavs at Dallas. The shootout that took place between Dirk Nowitzki and Tracy McGrady. There are encouraging signs, I think. Yeah, it's a matter now of taking advantage of the little momentum that they do have. Nobly lost his balance. Once again, Devin Brown is defending on Tracy McGrady. Here's Barrett to the crossover. Rebounded by Mastarevich. It's been a struggle this entire third quarter for Houston trying to score points. But again, remember, Jeff Van Gundy told us that before the game. He said, I don't know if we can get to 50. Well, they barely got there. Nobly had it knocked away. Shot clock down to seven. This is Rudrick. Check back in. Here's Brown. 4-3. 
Rose with the, the good attempt on the tip, and it comes back to Ugrin. And San Antonio will hold for a final shot of this third quarter. Rose comes out to set the screen. Here's Ugrin to the left hand. Beautifully done by the rookie from Slovenia. Final seconds of the quarter. Bowers did not realize it. So after three, it's the Spurs. 58, Rockets. 54, high point next. Yao Ming with 21. Tracy McGrady, 16. Tim Duncan with 18 points, 12 of his 18 in the third. On to the fourth quarter here at the Toyota Center, Houston, Texas. Rockets' last win over the Spurs, December of 2002, here in Houston. San Antonio has won the last seven meetings, and the Spurs lead by four. Well, Houston has done everything that they could defensively uh, and on the boards. They're holding their own there, 34-31 Spurs. They just can't seem to knock down a shot, 32%. Of course, this Spurs defense has done that to a lot of people, but we'll see if Houston can get anything going here offensively in the fourth quarter. San Antonio going to the, the trap at the start of the quarter. Here's McGrady, beautifully done. Tracy McGrady penetrated. To bring the Rockets with it, too. And Gundy told us earlier he wants McGrady to use an attacking dribble, not a rhythm dribble. And there is a big difference. I think if you remember watching Michael Jordan, he always attacked people on the dribble. Nobly forcing that running point. Sora and Mount. In the back court, McGrady moves up front. On the front line with Taylor and the Tumbo. Here's McGrady. Yes! Beautiful head fake on Ginobili. The game is tied at 58. And that's why Tracy McGrady is the two-time defending NBA scoring champion. You saw him a moment ago get all the way to the rim. Now the post up. Of course, he can shoot threes, get to the line, and Barrett with the steal. Here comes Barrett, three on one. Nice feed, but Asterovich rechecks it. That's the fourth block shot for Russell Asterovich. Watch the pass from Barrett. He loses the dribble a little bit there. Nice little feed, but you're Bob Sura, and you've got a seven-footer there. Not a whole lot you can do unless you can jump over him and dunk him. And uh, he couldn't quite do that. But great block by Nesterovich. San Antonio with their 11th block shot. McGrady for three. And a loose ball foul on Taylor. And you see... Popovich has gone back to Bowen to defend McGrady. Two quick hoops, and the San Antonio coach is not going to mess around. He's got to get his best defender on him here in the fourth quarter. Rockets and Spurs tied at 58. We're a minute and a half in, fourth quarter. Here's Bowen. Rebounded by Barrett. And Barrett on the run. McGrady met by Bowen. McGrady able to get to it. Bowen is playing with three fouls. Taylor. One-handed by Rose. Duncan back on the floor. Goddard by Maurice Taylor. Duncan. Loose ball foul, a push out on Rose. It's been a struggle all night for Tim Duncan down on that block. That's a shot he normally hits, and he does an excellent job of passing the ball out of the double team and reposting. Something he does as well as anybody in the league. But just hasn't been able to find the range tonight. And as a player, very difficult when you miss a lot of shots to get going. It just looks like that rim is smaller and smaller as the evening goes on. Looks like uh, Tracy McGrady took a shot. Trainer Keith Jones taking a look at Tracy. He's headed back to the locker room. Offensive foul is called. On Sura. McGrady headed back to the Rocket locker room. That's a tough blow. He knocked down the first two shots of the fourth quarter. Remember the Rockets struggling to score. 
as they have all season, but especially tonight. And they've got to have Tracy McGrady out there if they have any hope of winning this game. Look at these uh, five players on the floor here for the Rockets. There's not much scoring out there for Tumbo. Rebounds. You got Barrett at the point. You have the Ryan Bowen and Barrett fires one up. You have Mo Kelly and Bob Shore. You're saying it's not the 27 <laughs> Yankees? And you have the uh, it can't be Batumbo. And here's Ginobili. He saw Batumbo. He changed his mind and dished it to Rose. And now they reset. Shot clock. Down to six. One on the 24. Duncan, did he get it off in time? Yes, he did. Got to give Houston a lot of credit here tonight, Laura. They are defending like crazy. I mean, this is a difficult lineup for Jeff Van Gundy to have out on the floor, but they're getting after it. San Antonio 0 for 5 from the field here in this fourth quarter. Game is tied at 58. A look at downtown Houston. Rockets and Spurs tied at 58, 8.33 to go in this fourth quarter. National coverage of the NBA continuing this week. Tomorrow, Quinn Bill on ESPN starting 7.30 Eastern time. Philadelphia at Chicago. Portland at Utah. Then Saturday on NBA TV, Sacramento playing at the Conceco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Al Ming, who just returned, had the ball knocked out of his hands by Malik Rose. So the Rockets have six on the shot clock. But Sacramento sure has played well since that 0-3 start. They're back to their running and gunning selves. 13-5. and in five in a row. Here's Sura. Yes, that's a two-pointer. So the Rockets have outscored the Spurs six zip in this fourth quarter. Good to see one team finally reach 60. I watched Phoenix and the Lakers last night. It was 67-61 at halftime. Here we are midway through the fourth, and we finally get to 60. And as you saw, Tracy McGrady back on the Houston bench. Here's Bowen. Bruce Bowen has tied the game at 60. Seven points for Bowen. Rockets have Barrett at the point. They have Barrett, Sur at the guards. Galvin, Ryan Bowen, Mo Taylor up front. Stolen by Lano Ginobili. Duncan played by Yao. Here's Duncan. Loose ball foul. Stay right here, says the outside official. Tom Washington. Down on Taylor. That's his third. And you see Yao Ming now guarding Tim Duncan. Jeff Van Gundy not wanting to cover him with his big man early in the game. But fourth quarter, you're going to see these two guys go at it quite a bit one-on-one. -on -one. Tracy McGrady checks back in. For more on Tracy, let's go to Craig Sager. Well, we saw Tracy McGrady take that hard fall in the first quarter, but however, this injury was not related to it. He said he just got sudden stomach cramps. So went back to the locker room with the trainer, worked on did a few stretching exercises, then came back and said he feels a lot better. So nothing serious. All right, thanks, Craig. We thought he, he took a shot. He went down and then was hunched over on the bench. Ryan Bowen committing his his fourth foul. So the stat line on... On McGrady, who had that 48-point game last Thursday against Dallas. Since then, only 7 of 23, 7 of uh, 19, but has shown some signs here tonight. That is deflected out. Last touch by Rose. It'll be Houston ball. He did have the game-winning shot. Scored the winning basket against the uh, 76ers, despite that 7 for 23. What a great interview at halftime with Craig Sager. And Craig asked him if Bruce Bowen bothers him. He says, yeah, he's a pest, but he's, you know, he, he doesn't let Bowen get under his skin like a lot of other players do. He just competes and keeps an even feel about it. Chris has to really feel good. Sean Elliott, who does the color commentary <laughs> in San Antonio, refers to him as a roach. Here's Yao. Now, you call him a pest. Oh, no, that was Tracy. Uh, yeah. Is he a pest or a roach? Which, which I guess could be one or the same. Yeah. Game is tied at 60. Duncan draws the foul. Double teamed on that drive. 
is hit by Sora. That's the footwork here for Tim Duncan. Pull inside, reverse pivot, fake, and then here he gets fouled going up. Not a whole lot of contact, but gets the benefit of the call. And that's a move that Alonzo Mourning used to like to do, a little inside reverse pivot and then fake and try to use that speed and length to get past his defender. Duncan shooting so well at the line. He's now 7 of 8 at the foul line last night, 10 of 14. So he's really picked it up. Along with those numbers, 6 block shots, which is season high for Duncan. San Antonio overall with 11 rejections. That is a season high. Most blocked shots in a game this year by an individual player, 9. Theo Ratliff and Marcus Camby each had nine block shot games. It's amazing, isn't it? A guy like Duncan, this is probably one of his worst games of the year, and his line is still terrific. Duncan on the box out. San Antonio with the ball up by two. Rose rejected by Yao Ming. Here comes Sura. It's a three on two. McGrady, ball was deflected, and a foul on Taylor. Oh, a rare fast break in this game. Sir with a nice pass, but Spurs great transition defense getting back just in time to bother that layup attempt by McGrady, and that's Tim Duncan right there. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why the Spurs lead the league in field goal percentage defense year after year. And that was block number seven by Duncan. Rockets now over the foul limits of San Antonio, shooting penalty the last six minutes of this game. Evan Brown, solid free throw shooter, 81% last year. Evan Brown also spent some time with the Denver Nuggets, played in the USBL, and as we discussed earlier, the development league. So he's made the rounds, and he has worked himself into a, a, a very solid part of Greg Popovich's rotation. Really taking minutes from Brent Barry, who I, I think everybody agreed in the summer that Barry would be a huge addition to this club. I think he still will be eventually. But right now, Devin Brown is just playing so well that he's taken minutes away from Bones, as they call him. Brent Barry only eight minutes of playing time thus far tonight, just six minutes last night against his former team, the Seattle Sonics. 22nd timeout is called by the Rockets. San Antonio Spurs last year went 57-25, and 25, second in the West, a game behind Minnesota. Playoffs, they, they swept Memphis, then lost to the Lakers in six in the Western Conference semifinals. Lakers ending the Spurs season for the third time the past four years. You look at San Antonio off to the 16-4 and four start this year. Lakers came back last season from a 0-2 deficit, won four straight. Derek Fisher's desperation shot, game five, turning that series around. Maybe the greatest finish to a playoff game in the history of this NBA. Remember Tim Duncan knocking down that wild shot from the top of the circle just a second before Fisher hit his. Just under six minutes remaining on the four. Air ball from Taylor. And last touch by the Spurs. So Houston maintains possession with 10 on the shot clock. And now a timeout is called. San Antonio upset with that call. 6-0 run by the Spurs. They lead by four. Timeout taken. Well, Greg Popovich and the Spurs very upset about this call that uh, went against San Antonio just a moment ago off the battle for a loose ball. It looks like Bowen comes in and knocks it away as Devin Brown was sort of attempting to, to box him out, but close call. A lot of times if you hustle the way Bowen does, you're going to get the benefit of the call now and then. Well, the ball back to Houston. Ryan Bowen. And here is McGrady. remaining in this fourth quarter Spurs 64 the Rockets 60 and that's why the Rockets desperately need shooters to put around McGrady and Yalmain McGrady with the great penetration but 
Ryan Bowen, not really the shooter you need out on the floor to really complement the Raiders. Shot clock is down to one. Wow. Just didn't get it away. Once again, an excellent defensive possession by the Rockets. Brady. Played now by Devin Brown. Brady with the step. Getting it to Yao Ming. What a play by, by Tracy McGrady. Great penetration and then a nice finish by Yao up and over the outstretched arm of Tim Duncan, who, as you mentioned, Mark, already has seven blocks tonight. 23 points for Yao Ming. San Antonio by two. Now Padgett defending on Duncan with help. Parker, Brown, shot clock, down to two and a foul. Foul on Sura, and that is number five. Now Tracy McGrady, we know he can put the ball on the floor, we know he can get to the rim. And draw help and then the beautiful dump to Yao Ming and that's why McGrady is so good he can get anywhere on the floor that he wants and he can also rise up and knock down a three-point shot Evan Brown Brown is three for three at the line he has 11 points Antonio Saturday night be back home for the, the Cavaliers going up against LeBron James and those Cleveland Cavaliers and their next Wednesday night home for Orlando. They play six of their next eight at home. Finally getting a break here as Padgett misses the 18 footer. The Spurs have had two sets of games now where they played seven games in ten days. Coaching staff told me they haven't had a chance to practice now for weeks. Duncan off the double team. Rebounded by Duncan. It counts in the foul. Now it's been a frustrating night for Tim Duncan, but he's staying with it. You see again the missed jump hook that he usually makes, but he follows it up, gets the rebound, and then Padgett with the reach in. Tim Duncan now looking for his 23rd point. 10 2 run by the Spurs. Duncan is 8 of 9. Line. And he's got it down. If he is able to continue this this kind of free throw success, uh, we are, as you mentioned earlier, we're going to see points added to that average. Yeah, such a huge facet of his game. Just like Shaquille O'Neal, you know, he's going to go to the line so often that if we get that percentage up there, it means a lot of points. Well, Barrett with a good idea as he tried to get it to to Yao Ming, but it's a Houston turnover. This is the biggest lead of the night. San Antonio by seven. And ultimately, you wonder, can Houston score enough to win this game? But seven points in this game seems more like 20 to Jeff Van Gundy. And to make matters worse, they're without one of their scorers, Jim Jackson. Even with Jim Jackson in the lineup, this team struggles to score. Nice move by Devin Brown. Scores now lead at 71-62. What an addition. This young man has been 14 points now. Three rebounds, making all the right plays. Plays very much under control. Tough defender. And again, a pass intended for Yao. Goes astray. Rockets take a timeout. A 13-2 run for the Spurs. They now lead by nine with 3-10 to play in this fourth quarter. Devin Brown going to last. Play of the game. Spurs have become an excellent passing team, obviously. Tony Parker sees that Duncan isn't open. He moves the ball on. Duncan seals Juwan Howard and Rasho Nesterovich finds him with the beautiful bounce pass. San Antonio, Marv, now has 18 assists on their 25 hoops. I think this is their best passing team that they've had in years. The addition of Kano Udrick has helped. Uh, Manu Ginobili, of course, and I think the renewed attention to moving the ball from Tony Parker has been huge for this club. Just under three minutes remaining in the fourth. Here's Brown again. Brown. Kevin Brown, six of nine. He has 16 points. Well, he's the go-to guy. I mean, they call plays for him coming out of the timeout. This guy's on fire right now. Brady, and it's tipped home. Now 
Yao Ming will get credit. I don't know. Uh, might have been Tim Duncan yeah. inadvertently put it there. That's why like Duncan, he can't make one at the other end, but he can make one for Houston tonight. And Brown showing confidence, but rejected by Yao Ming. Our statistician Brian Taylor pointing out that Houston started the fourth quarter with those four quick points by McGrady. They have only four points since then, the last eight minutes. It's been a, a 15-2 run for San Antonio. Coming up next, game two of TNT's Thursday night doubleheader, Boston Celtics, Portland Trailblazers, followed by... Side, the NBA. These guys, well, they were passing the ball around. I didn't see Kenny giving it up to Charles. <laughs> they never passed much during their careers, did they? 2.23 to go in the fourth. Marv Albert, Steve Kirk, Craig Sager were at the Toyota Center, Houston, Texas. And San Antonio looking to bounce back after the loss at home to the Sonics last night. Trying to make it tied of the last. 10. That's a 24 second 24 violation. Second. Smart play by the Rockets and Jeff Van Gundy in particular. Popovich calls the timeout, sets up a play. Rockets come out in his own defense and it's a tactic that has worked quite well in this league. A lot of teams set up a play to go against a man to man. They come out and see the zone and everything they learned in the timeout is for not. Guys cannot score. Yao Ming, 4 of 6 from the field in the second half. The rest of the Rockets, 5 for 26. Make it 5 for 27. Off the miss jumper and the miss tip. Now the Spurs have done this to a lot of people. Houston can't feel too badly about it, but certainly you got to shoot better than 31% if you're going to win a game. Those was rejected, able to recover, shot clock to five, or Bowen for three. It's a three on one. Sir pulls up for the three and comes up short. Oof. And the Rockets are, are hearing it from the crowd now. Yes, they are. Well, they need Jim Jackson, but they probably need more than that. Of course, Charlie Ward on the shelf with a knee injury. He's an excellent three-point shooter. They've got to find a way to surround their big two with some shooters. Foul is called on Yao Ming. Houston Rockets on the way to dropping to 8 and 12. They're playing game 3 of a long homestand. Six-game stand in the stretch playing 9 of 10 at home. While San Antonio their way to going to 17 and 4. Big clubs around the NBA, San Antonio, Seattle at 16 and 3 coming into tonight's play, Phoenix at 16 and 3. Remember what Greg Popovich said to us today, he said, Seattle and Phoenix have been the two teams that have played most like themselves. They've done the best job of being who they are. And he said, when we're good, when we win games, it's when we're being who we are, and that means defensive-minded and tough. And although their offense has been atrocious tonight, they have gotten after it defensively. Yao Ming on the follow. 74-66. The Rockets' all-time low. Well, that will be surpassed tonight as Patrick is able to hit off the steal and it's a six point game on three occasions they have scored 66 points and now the Rockets have 68 and they're down six with 47 seconds left looks like the game time decision has been made in Kenny's mind meantime good game they got going on in Dallas Antonio Daniels swiped by Marquise Daniels and that cuts the gap. We'll keep you updated on that game. Back tomorrow. All right, 47.3 to go in this fourth quarter. San Antonio with a 74-68 lead. You see timeouts remaining. San Antonio two left. Rockets have one full timeout. And the foul is called. So Rockets over the foul limit. It is on. McGrady, that's only his first. San Antonio huddled up, chatting with head coach 
Greg Popovich, and the officials say, guys, come on, come on to the floor, you got to play. Well, Popovich is furious. They didn't run the play that he had designed, and then Manu Ginobili with the dangerous cross-court pass that was very nearly intercepted by Houston. Kevin Brown, 5 for 5 with the line. He now has 17 points. 85% free throw shooter. And it looks like Rick Popovich is upset with Mano Ginobili. And that's what that discussion was about. Now they did not get that play correct out of the timeout. And Popovich obviously upset with Manu. Here's McGrady for three. 35 seconds to go. They look to foul. And Robert Sora picks up number six. Jeff Van Gundy wanted the Rockets to foul Duncan, despite the fact that he's had the hot hand at the line and has improved his free throw shooting. He'd rather see Duncan at the foul line. Well, and they could have gotten Parker, too, who's just 68% this year. So, uh, you know, if you got Bruce Bowen on the floor, the one guy they didn't want to foul was Devin Brown. Brown with 10 points, 10 of his 18 in the fourth quarter, and 6 of 6 at the line here in the fourth quarter. And Greg Popovich sending Mano Ginobili back into the game with 31.9 remaining. Spurs up by 5. This has been a harrowing scene for the Spurs for many games the last few years. Five, six point lead, going to the foul line, just trying to hang on to victories. They've been one of the worst foul shooting teams in the NBA the last several years. They're up to 26th this year, which is an improvement, Mark. Kevin Brown continues to hit at the line. And the Spurs now lead by seven. Rockets looking for a quick shot. Bowen is all over McGrady. Foul is picked up. Hits. A potential four-point play. Tracy McGrady from downtown. And Tim Duncan could not get out of the way. It's called for the foul. Wow. What a shot by McGrady. You'll see the screen by Yao Ming, which forces Duncan to help. And he just draws the contact and somehow gets it to go. Incredible shot by T-Mac. So McGrady to the line where he has hit on three of three, looking for point number 27, and looking to complete a four-point play. Houston has to deny Devin Brown the ball. He's made four in a row now. Spurs they call a timeout to try to set something up, but it's now a one-possession game. Amazing. 24 three tenths seconds to go in this fourth quarter. The Rockets getting back into it. It has been an adventurous finish for the San Antonio Spurs with 49 seconds remaining. This was a 10-point San Antonio lead, 74-64. We're down to 24 seconds, and it's a three-point game. So within 25 seconds, the Rockets able to get back into this. And it's amazing because they couldn't score 10 points in a quarter most of this game. They were struggling to get anything to go, and all of a sudden, in a panic, they find a way to get something going. Now, the Spurs have one timeout left. They brought Brent Berry into the game to shoot free throws. And they're going to try to get the ball to Devin Brown, who's 4 for 4 here. High firing, inbounds, into the backcourt. They need some time. Parker, Jason, Bob McGrady. Now Brown. And a foul is finally given. Houston has been over the limit for the last six minutes of this fourth quarter. It is on Patrick. Kirk Popovich letting Devin Brown have it because he's saying, you've hit four in a row, son. Don't throw the ball to Tim Duncan in this situation. And now, even though Duncan has been on the mark tonight at 10 for 12 from the line, you've got a guy who doesn't feel overly comfortable in this situation. On the season, 65%, which is a dramatic improvement from last year when he was at, at 59, and he's receiving the treatment. From the crowd, 16 seconds remaining. 
Spurs now lead by four. Great job by Duncan just to settle in and trust his stroke and knock down that shot. Houston with one timeout left. We'll see how they play this. Galvin returns. Bruce Bowen is back. Duncan 11 of 13 at the line. Plus free throw shooting by Tim Duncan and Jeff Van Gundy will use his final timeout. 16 and two tenths seconds remaining. Five points, San Antonio Lee. Well, Steve, the Spurs not noted for their efficiency at the free throw line in recent years. Doing it at the line in this fourth quarter. They've hit 14 of 15. Thanks to Devin Brown and, and Tim Duncan. And yeah, Duncan did an excellent job there. He's not the guy who's accustomed to shooting those shots, but knocked him down. And now, if you're Houston, it's a two-possession game. You need a three and a two in some combinations. So I would expect Van Gunny to get McGrady the ball and through the Spurs and make him go to the rim, get the deuce, and then take your chances at the foul line again. Reese Gaines has checked in, so it's Yao Ming, Scott Padgett, Grayson O'Grady up front, Reese Gaines, and Andre Barrett in the backcourt. Barrett will throw in 16.2 to go in the fourth. Barrett can't find anybody. They have no timeouts remaining. Finally gets it in to McGrady. McGrady over four and four. Three. Oh, yes! Yes! <laughs> Tracy McGrady cuts it to a two-point lead. And timeout taken by, by San Antonio. And that was close to another potential four-point play. Bowen was all over McGrady. Timeout San Antonio. 11.2 to go in the fourth quarter. In the last 38 seconds, Houston has scored 14 points. They've outscored the Spurs 14 to 6. And this a moment ago. Well, they almost didn't get the ball in. And now you've got the best defender in the game on McGrady. How does he hit this? Bowen not wanting to pick up the foul. And McGrady amazingly somehow gets it to go. It's a two-point game. And a good job by Andre Barrett. They had no timeouts left. Close to a five-second count, but got the ball inbound so 11.2 to go in this fourth quarter san antonio now clinging to a two-point lead they've led by as many as 11 yao ming on the inbounds trying to make things difficult for brent barry gets it in Kevin brown lost it here comes mcgrady no timeouts remaining mcgrady for the win yeah. oh. McGrady with 33 points. San Antonio had won seven straight against Houston, and it's all McGrady scoring the last 13 for the Rockets. 13 points in 33 seconds. And he never had a doubt that he was going to pull up from three and go for the win, and why not? Unbelievable. All those people who left, Mark, they're driving home in their cars right now wondering what were we thinking? Well, we were wrapping it up for San Antonio, but we had to stay. An astounding finish. The Rockets pull it out. Let's go to Craig and Tracy McGrady. Well, Team Mac, points were so hard to come by in this game. Suddenly you put up 13 in the past 45 seconds. What was going on out there? Just trying to do anything possible to get a shot up. And uh, situations like that, best player got to step up and try to make plays. And shots are falling for me at the end. I don't know how I got him off because Bruce Bowen is a pest on the defensive man. But, you know, my will just took over and, and was knocking down shots for me. Down by double digits in the final minute. Was it the four-point play that you made when Duncan followed you on the three that made you feel, hey, we can actually win this thing? You know what? That's what gave me confidence when I knocked down that four-point play. It gave me confidence to just do it again. Anytime I got the ball in my hand in any room that I got to get up a shot, 
I was going to let it go. But still, you guys are so far behind. They had the ball a few seconds. They turn it over. How did you get the ball? What were you thinking? Well, we were supposed to just trap and uh, go for it still. Unfortunately, you got to, you know, fortunate enough, the guy slipped. Ball came right to me. And the uh, only thing I was thinking about, I didn't want to tie the game. So I was thinking about getting up for three. Got it up. Ball game. I, 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 I never been a, a part of anything like this. So. You got it. Excuse me. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you get your chance to uh, get to look at the replay, but that's why you're the NBA scoring champ. I appreciate it, Kurt. <laughs> Back to you, Mark. Right, thank you, Craig. That was a gutsy shot by Tracy McGrady for the game winner. He went for the win. It was 74-64 with 52 seconds remaining. Houston with a 17-6 run in the last 52 seconds to pull it out. Thanks to our producer, Scooter Bertino, our director, Renato Lowe, statistician, Brian Taylor. For Craig Sager, Steve Kerr, and our entire crew, Marv Albert, saying goodnight from Houston. Following a quick break, we'll take you to Portland. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. It's the Verizon Wireless Halftime Report. Bernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Charles Barkley, 52 to 50. Could be a great finish developing in this game, but it's going to have to go some to beat the finish we had. What's up with you, Charles? Watch these highlights. What a San Antonio and Houston in game one of our doubleheader. Duncan with the with the with the stick. He's got 26, 18, and seven blocks. Groundhog Day. 74-64 with under a minute to play. Oh, we're skating through this victory with San Antonio. This game is over. But what? what wait. T Mac hits a three. T Mac, uh, watch okay. this. This is the one, the four point play. Oh, we're here. still up. That's all right. Oh, four point. Oh, it's getting a little nervous, but we're still okay. We're still all right. Okay. San Antonio. It's 80 to 75. Oh, no here's, problem. Here's T Mac, and uh, well, if this is going for three. Well, oh, wait, wait. It's a little nervous, but we're all right. We're still up. We're still up two. It's no problem. Let's just run the clock out. Let's get Where's five. Where's he going? Let's get five. Wait, oh, don't get going back the other way. Oh, no, he's going to try to tie the game up. No, he's going for the win. <laughs> 13 points in the last 33 seconds for Tracy McGrady and the Rockets come from 10 back in the last minute to win it 81 to 80. The Spurs have been the only team in the NBA to not allow a guy to score 30 points on him so far this year. And he only had 20 with 33 seconds. The good finishes with 33. 81 to 80, the Rockets win it. Craig Sager talked to uh, T-Mac and, and Greg Popovich after the game. But still, you guys are so far behind. They had the ball a few seconds. They turn it over. How did you get the ball? What were you thinking? Well, we were supposed to just trap and uh, go for it still. Unfortunately, got it. You know, fortunate enough, the guy slipped. Ball came right to me. And the uh, only thing I was thinking about, I didn't want to tie the game. So I was thinking about getting up for three. Got it up. Ball game. I, 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 I never be a, a part of anything like this. Hard to believe what Tracy did with the 13 points in the last minute. What happened? How was he so hot? Did you sense he was feeling it? How was he so hot? Yeah, how the hell do I know? I, mean, I don't know. Guys get hot. I don't know why they get hot. They get hot. I have no idea. I mean, he's a great player. He's a great player. Were you surprised at some of the mistakes down the stretch? I mean, they're pretty uncharacteristic. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, little just, man at Sager. Let's just put it in a nutshell. 17 points in the fourth quarter, the 13 in the last 35. They outscore San Antonio 19-7 in the last 254. San Antonio without a field goal. That's got to be a record, 13 points in 35 seconds. That was uh, got to be a re NBA it, record. It has to be. It has to be a record. Ever seen anything like that? Ever seen anything like Tracy McGrady tr just taking the game over there when you're down 10 with a minute to play? They were being booed with over just over a minute to play when Sura threw the because they're not very good. San Antonio I know. blew the game. I think it's re reminiscent of the Reggie Miller against the Knicks in the playoffs game. But what in the hell was that Brown kid doing trying to dribble the ball? <laughs> oh, this is Reggie Miller. This is Reggie Smith who brought it up. Uh, How did y'all know that? This was this was eight points in eight point nine seconds for Reg. Well, maybe that's but not as we talked about different stage. Kenny. Yeah, the stage is different. But you know, I always said the Rockets look better when they run. No. <laughs> you know what? no, no, but there's, there's like 48 minutes like you know, that. But no, there is some truth in jest in terms of a freelancing style and going, though they have athletes. Tracy McGrady plays better when the game is hectic and up and down, and you can create some type of havoc that maybe not do you the same degree during the course of a game. The Rockets don't create that, so he doesn't have those 10 0 spurts when he scores 10 points like he did in Orlando or when he did even at the end of the tail end in, in, in Toronto. So. 
Now you get a stationary Tracy McGrady who had 20 points, and you get one who gets hectic. You got to create those type of elements throughout the course of the game for a guy like that, other than the end of the game and desperation time. You know, I'm just San Antonio had the game won. Mental mistakes down the stretch. The free throw shooting are always is shaky, but all the kid got to do is hold the ball. They'll foul him. You know, he was he dribbling that ball too. Well, that was just a comedy of the errors. That was one of meaning. Tim Duncan with the four-point play. Yeah, no oh, question. Don't foul it. You, you know, but he learned that in grade school. See, don't I foul never, it. I never worried too much about it because when guys throw up Hail Mary shots and they go in, that's just luck. I know, like, guys says, well, how's he hot? First of all, you give Trace McGrady those same shots tomorrow night. He won't make, They were playing good, solid defense, but there's no reason for them to lose that game. you got to hold that ball and get fouled. 81. I mean, that's like six seconds ago in the game. Don't dribble. Just hold the ball. Make up. They're going to foul you. Got to know the time and the score. 81-80, the final score. And you say, how do you, how's the guy get hot? One more look at the at the look that Greg Popovich. Yeah, uh, first of all, these aren't hot shots. These are, these are the look. Uh, did you ask me, how did the guy get that hot? No, it's, really. It's, him, right? it's not me. It's him, did, right? Yeah, how did he get that hot? <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> T-Max, 17 <laughs> points in the fourth quarter. Craig, I'm still down with you, man. I know why he got high, Craig. I'll tell you <laughs> later. Both of those come in the last 30, but you're going to tell him later. Call me when you want to know. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you why he got San Antonio's high. last basket game with two for Tell us why high, Craig. Tell us why he's high. And then <laughs> <laughs> the largest comeback in the final minute of a game to win for the uh, for the Rockets. So that's, I mean, that was some pretty amazing stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, you don't if, see if that you notice, though, in, in Tracy McGrady's last shot, they're, they're down two. And San Antonio Spurs were basically in the same position uh, that the other teams went with backpedaling mm -hmm. because the Spurs, can't, they can't foul. You're, you're up two points, so you can't be aggressive defensively. Yeah, so but you start to backpedal. That was more of a fast break situation. Yeah. That was a, that play they had. That was a, like a set play. Well, with yeah. Derek Anderson, the same way. Yeah, Ball's but, coming at you. You're up. Yeah, you're but, not going to go for a steal. Yeah, you're but, not going to go for the block. The, the same way you would if you were up, yeah, but down rather. Yeah, but that happened because the guy turned the ball. That was a fast break. The advantage that Portland had was it was a one-point game because you play defense totally different if you're down two or three. You know, they had to play great defense. They had to be backpedaling because when you only have one of them, you can't foul anybody trying to no block them or anything. So it gave, it gave Portland a great advantage that they were only down one. Because you can play different when you're down two or three. And, and I joked about earlier, Ernie, with uh, the Rockets saying, you know what, see what happens when they run. But uh, one of the things that Jeff Van, Van Gundy has to take a look at, you know, Tracy McGrady is a great athlete who can put on runs like that if you create havoc inside the game. So in the second quarter, the fourth quarter, inside the third quarter, you have to create some type of fast atmosphere so a guy like that who can explode for 13 points in 35 seconds can maybe explode for nine points, for seven quick points because he has that ability, but when you walk the ball up the court, he doesn't have that 